It's a live action series from Japan based on a Chinese story about a trip to India and dubbed in Britain. I'm sure it's wrong to find fault with others. You're always doing it. It's full of martial arts action, special effects, slapstick comedy, and it has an awful lot of heart. And it's a show about a stone simian who, word on the street has it, was born from an egg on a mountaintop, the punkiest monkey who ever popped. Monkey. Let's not get involved in this one. Let's just continue our journey. Or not? Your story's intriguingly bizarre. Monkey is a fantasy action comedy show about this fella named, funnily enough, Monkey. He's the magical monkey king who whacks demons and monsters with his magic staff and then flies off on a cloud, which is certainly one way to beat the traffic. We're talking today about a series that's had limited exposure in North America. Oh, there they go. But for everybody else still watching, there were multiple versions shown around the world. And while the English language version is called Monkey, a large number of folks know the show as Monkey Magic, thanks to its intoxicatingly catchy theme tune. I will not be the guy to go through the comments to correct everybody who wants to call the show Monkey Magic. Right! But it's monkey. <laughs> Throughout this video I'll be referencing Japanese and Chinese words, which not being a native speaker I will endeavour to pronounce as best I can. But at the same time, don't be too surprised if I fall on my face like an acrobat with a severe ear infection. And so we're friends. My best of friends. <laughs> It's ancient China and the place is in chaos. Buddha decides the people of China could use a little more Buddhaing up and so tasks the boy priest Tripitaka to travel to India on a pilgrimage to fetch some holy scriptures that will enlighten the people. Buddha gives Tripitaka a number of travelling companions to act as escorts. Sandy, a fish spirit. Pigsy, reincarnated as a pig monster. And Monkey, the self-proclaimed great sage equal of heaven. Sandy and Pigsy are hoping to be readmitted to heaven, while Monkey believes his reward will be that he becomes human. So Tripitaka began the enormous journey through wild and unknown lands. Each of the group has a unique character and was brought to life by a charismatic cast, many of whom were also musical performers in Japan at some stage in their careers. Star Masaaki Sakai is particularly adept at moving between action, showing emotion and pulling very silly faces. And there are lots of fights and magic tricks along the way, a few tears here and there, and lots of goofy laughs as the three protectors break each other's balls. Who did this terrible thing? That group standing there! Oh, oh, man! Well, he's are. quite good looking! It's like a long car ride with you and your siblings on the back seat fighting over the open window. Funnily enough, there's no debate about closing the window when Dad has to clear his throat. You all know that it's wrong, wrong to use magic because you three are so lazy. I'm disgusted. You, Monkey, you shame you, me. You're disgusted. Tripitaka, the priest, is as pure as they come, naive and trusting. He's righteous and always extols the virtues of prayer and piety. And so, very fun to sit next to on your next flight to Ibiza. Tripitaka, I think you ought That's to That's enough, Monkey. Tripitaka, despite being a boy priest, was played and voiced by women. We'll exorcise this spirit tonight. Sandy was once commander of the Heavenly Hosts and banished after Monkey broke a jade cup. On Earth, he lived as a fish spirit feasting on humans before he gave up his cannibalistic ways to join Tripitaka's pilgrimage. If there's one thing you should know by now, it's that Monkey can't read. I know that. What a stupid well, cretin he is. Of the three escorts, Sandy was the philosopher, able to hold his own in a skirmish, armed as he is with his water staff. Though in practice he was the least powerful in a battle and wasn't all that strong as a magician. I know I'm equal to any hundred, of course, but what if we need a hundred and one? Yes. Pigsy was also banished from heaven, though in his case it was for his lustful and greedy ways. The former marshal of the heavenly host had seen his swinish instincts influencing his reincarnation as a pig spirit. Ah! 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 Why it hurts all the agony. Pigsy is lazy, arrogant, always thinking of food, booze, and chasing women. A widow, are you? Well, that's lucky. My name is now Pigsy. Armed with his muckrake, Pigsy is a capable fighter and can even pull off a little bit of magic here and there. I was going to suggest a meal break, but I'm better now. Then climb that hill and tell us what you see. That was a low down trick. And then there is Monkey. 
Monkey was King Monkey. He had learned some powerful magic and decided he was powerful enough to challenge heaven. On his arrival in heaven, he's treated with the same disdain as rich folks do to their new neighbours who've just won the lottery. Monkey gorges himself on some magical peaches, which makes him immortal, which sounds fine until you have to deal with the consequences of eating so many peaches. Monkey went on eating peaches. Monkey believes himself so powerful that he's begun introducing himself as the Great Sage, Equal of Heaven. Great Sage, Equal of Heaven! Great Sage, you're a monkey, that's what you are, just a great day! Monkey believes his own LinkedIn posts so much that he even challenges Buddha. As a punishment, he finds himself trapped under a mountain for 500 years, which is about half the time needed by George R. R. Martin to finish A Song of Ice and Fire. Monkey is offered a chance at redemption if he accompanies Tripitaka on his trip to India, but there are conditions. Monkey is made to wear a gold ring on his head that can be used to punish the Monkey King if he gets out of line whenever Tripitaka recites the Headache Sutra. Ah, not the sutra! Stop it! Oh, you're making me suffer! Monkey has a magical wishing staff as his weapon of choice. He can miniaturize it so it fits in his ear or enlarge it enough to take on a giant monster. He can also do all sorts of magic tricks, like turning into an insect or a die. How's that? And can often impersonate somebody else, though sometimes the voice is a little bit of a giveaway. Okay. He can also create an instant army just by blowing on a few body hairs, which would be useful. I could probably invade Brazil just with my right leg. No, monkey. <laughs> then, of course, he can summon a cloud. It's highly useful at times, but it can't be used for their main journey to India. Cheap and nasty Canton cotton wool. Who'd buy a model like that? Artificial tat. Couldn't recycle it in a cushion. I've been riding it for some time now. Monkey is willful and impatient, stubborn, often put out by Tripitaka's demands and strict commands to avoid violence at all costs. He's often censured for jumping to conclusions and occasionally sent home. But of course, he'd always be back because he's always needed. <laughs> Even though the group is considered a quartet, there's also the horse, who was once a dragon. Don't ask, because it's a long and pretty basic explanation. Later on, the horse will be able to turn into a human, Yulong. Not particularly useful in a fight, but he has a lot of heart. From an action point of view, he brings about as much to the table as Uncle Reg does when he turns up empty-handed for Christmas dinner. The group encounter all manner of spirits and demons and monsters along the way. Some have to be defeated in battle, others have to be dealt with through more subtle methods. There are times where appealing to the demon's better nature is the ticket. There are resolutions around reuniting estranged family members and others involving a monster's rehabilitation. And a lot of well choreographed fights with our trio facing off against hordes of stuntmen wielding wooden swords. The show's special effects were quite ambitious for a show of this type. There's optical effects, model work, compositing, mats, miniatures, animated effects. Ouch! The second season tends to have more larger monsters, which, like the ancient temple ceilings supported by Doric columns fashioned from nougat, haven't held up well. Still, they are often fun effects, particularly Monkey's Cloud, which was initially animated, but most of the time is made more simply. To make your own cloud, boys and girls, take a handful of cotton wool, and that's it. Jesus Christ, I went around for this. As Monkey comes from a different cultural history, it does tend to not lean on the common storytelling tropes and cliches if you're weaned on other series popular with kids in the land of English-speaking programs. All this makes one see the wheel of karma. The shows have a surprising amount of heart. These characters will argue and bicker, but they'll also sacrifice themselves for each other. It's not always a strict translations, and there are a few attempts at ribald humour that would usually sail innocently over the heads of the target audience. Noises from the world had kept the Jade Emperor awake for several nights while he was visiting his good friend, Star Vega, on business matters. Even monkeys, as they say, fall from trees. Pigs get diarrhea too, so what? There would also be a lot of life lessons and morality plays in the show. Every demon we'd meet would need a different approach. One trio of creatures powered by eating industrial quantities of paper, pearls and wine are able to band together to fire off energy beams. Another episode shows us two societies at odds with each other with one side in perpetual daylight and another in perpetual nighttime. A difference you can best spot by who's got the more faded curtains. One place worships pigs and turns Pigsy into a deity, but at a cost. 
Another province only accepts demons, which requires everybody to pass a magic test if they want to enter. The storylines are varied enough that stories don't tend to blend into each other. Folks will remember the episode where this happens or that happens. You know, the episode where they eat mushrooms that gives them amnesia. A cloud comes for you! <gasps> no, 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 no. Or the episode where a demon convinces Monkey that the only cure for a plague that's threatening to kill Tripitaka is a treatment made from fresh monkey brain. Pig's ears, couldn't it say instead? Monkey brain. There are dog demons, slug demons, fish demons, a gambling demon, a fractions demon. The only thing missing is Matt demon. A fraction is the sound that people make when they sneeze, and this is called onomatopoeia. There are a few makeup effects here and there, Pigsy's ears and his occasional pig snout, Tripitaka's bald head, and a lot of variations of demons with ears or horns. Well, I hope they're horns. You're the greatest! Most of the time, the effect is limited to face paint and a furry hat, much like my ill-advised attempts to secretly enter Wales without paying the toll on the Severn Bridge. <laughs> the worst makeup effect is Monkey's on again and off again attempt at a moustache throughout the show's second season. The great sage equal of heaven is here! Which, for the sake of ease, we'll call this look Magnum Monkey. Monkey takes a few episodes to set up the world and the characters before the pilgrims set off together. Oh, oh, I have! Yes, 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 yes! The second season premiere introduces Yulong and a recast Pigsy, but apart from that, there are only a very few callbacks to previous episodes, so there only needs to be a loose viewing order. Hey, what are you doing? The show's internal logic can be a little haphazard, the obvious issue being why doesn't Monkey just fly on his cloud to retrieve the scriptures instead of everybody having to wear out a couple of dozen pairs of boots? <laughs> well, firstly, they wouldn't learn anything, and secondly, if they did, we'd probably be stuck with more repeats of You Can't Do That on Television. Well, I don't think it's funny at all! Monkey is a powerful fighter and a magician, but he's not able to beat the villain straight away. Usually he's defeated or nobbled in some way. <laughs> before coming up with a cunning ploy to beat the villain, usually involving his staff or his cloud. There are cool epic stories, like the end of the first season, which had the pilgrims having all sorts of hallucinations and visions. Monkey dies for Tripitaka, and then they believe they finally reached India. You've been bewitched! Along the way, some of the pilgrims will find love, or a reason why they should exit the group. There are a number of times that Monkey elects to leave Tripitaka, or is cast out, but he has to return by the end of the episode for whatever reason. Monkey is often frustrated by his travelling companions, but finds it hard to give them up. They do care for each other despite the constant griping. Also, Pigsy still owes money, and if Monkey ever wants to see that cash again, he's gonna have to be there for the duration. Now let's all talk about other things. I'm the one who does all the work. Are you? The 16th century Chinese epic Journey to the West told a story of a pilgrimage from China to India to fetch some holy scriptures that would enlighten the people of ancient China. Journey to the West is one of Asia's most celebrated stories and has been translated and retold many times. An abridged English translation by Arthur Whaley in 1942 was considered a definitive translation for decades, despite cutting large sections of the original text. Translation is a hard business. I once tried to translate a new version of Cinderella, but got very confused and my version of Cinderella has her losing her glass eye. Journey to the West has been retold in books, comics, movies and television time and time again, with the mid-80s manga Dragon Ball inspired by the story. Journey to the West has been a popular story in Japan for ages, with a large proportion of the adaptations originating there. In the late 1970s, a live-action series used the story as the basis of a show that would run for 52 episodes over two seasons. The show would be known in Japan as Sayuki, more or less translated as Journey to the West but a UK dub would eventually be known as Monkey. Elemental forces caused the egg to hatch. From it then came a stone monkey. The nature of monkey was irrepressible. In the early 1970s, another classic Chinese story, The Water Margin, was adapted by Japanese broadcasters Nippon Television in 1973. An English dubbed version narrated by Bert Kwok with a loose adaptation by David Weir was broadcast by the BBC in 1976 and 77. Busan Yang, you're going away. I want to come with you. Whatever for? You don't know where I'm going, do you? It was fairly successful in Britain, and so another Japanese adaptation of a Chinese story looked like it might make a good show. Where will you get an army from? 
Every hair on my body can fight for us. Sayuki was first shown in Japan in 1978 to very good ratings, but the second season did not rate as well, and so the show ended after 52 episodes. The pilgrims still have as far to go as they have traveled. The series was mostly filmed in Japan, with some limited location work carried out in China, sometimes as a second unit, and occasionally with cast members. Monkey was not a cheap production for its day, and a lot of the time it looks expensive. Of course, the English version was aimed at a younger audience. Mm, flirting! Yo, 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 yo! Fish! Matcha. I'm not a fish! It's not like that at all! We were both alone, and I was just looking after your friend, that's all. When it came time to dub the show into English, David Weir mostly worked with synopses, rather than full translations, and worked to make the dialogue seem naturalistic and match the original actor's mouth movements. The result seems relatively respectful to Chinese culture and Buddhism. Weir's version would keep the episodes mostly as is, keeping the original Japanese music and sound effects, and on occasion, some of the original voices are still used. <laughs> Only half of the show's second season was originally dubbed into English, with the BBC selecting 13 out of the 26 shows. The reason, the subject matter of many episodes in the second year is considerably darker in tone than the first year. So many dead bodies. At least 10. Like Western fairy tales, there are often tales involving monsters eating children, though most of the time in Monkey, this was usually undone by the episode's conclusion. <laughs> These episodes would find their way to DVD with subtitles. <laughs> but in 2004, the show's UK home video distributor, Fabulous Films, organised for those 13 remaining episodes to be translated and dubbed into English. Uh, wh what are you doing, Tabula Priest? Most of the show's original cast returned to voice their characters with a few substitutes here and there. Success at last! When you watch these shows for the first time, you might see why some of the episodes were skipped, as they have much darker themes. One show has Pigsy trying different ways of committing suicide, another has a demon on death row after killing kids so her son could be better at fractions. As somebody who often did poorly at maths in school, I had no idea that was even an option. These 13 newer episodes feature more mature subjects than the episodes dubbed in the 80s. Plus, the scripts by George Rubicek are a little spicier in their references and language. Cheeky little demon! You little turd! Well, there are roadworks ahead. Nonsense. Contact One enjoyable episode has a group of fake pilgrims starving our heroes to death. It has a lot of fun scenes in it, which makes you wonder why they didn't dub these back in the 80s, and then, oh, a guy getting cut in half was probably just a little bit too much for these early evening time slots where Monkey would usually be screened. <laughs> That was my fault. I shouldn't have ducked. Many of those in the English cast had previously worked on David Weir's version of The Water Margin, though that series narrator, British actor Bert Kwok, served as narrator for the 13 episodes of Monkey dubbed in 2004. Tripitaka and his followers are on their way to the Dairayon Shrine in India to receive the Holy Scriptures. Frank Duncan was the original narrator of the English version. In the worlds before Monkey, primal chaos reigned. Monkey's voice artist David Collings was familiar to viewers of Doctor Who and Sapphire and Steel. Peter Woodthorpe as Pigsy, Maria Warburg as Tripitaka, and Gareth Armstrong as Sandy had all worked in various productions over the years. And pee before you go to bed! Right! Also of note, John Hollis, Miriam Margulies, who voiced various women and children in the series. Sounds almost exactly like... And Faulty Towers' own Manuel, Andrew Sachs, voiced Yu Lung, among others. The dialogue is delivered with slightly exaggerated Asian accents, a concept that, like leadline school uniforms, hasn't aged all that well. But Monkey's voiceover work feels like it has an affectionate connection to the source material. The eunuch should not take pride in his chastity. I mean, you go from this <laughs> to this. Hold on a second. Several seconds, in fact. He is holding. Only on. because I asked him to. But at the same time, it could have been so much worse. Straight ship attack. I nearly shit myself. Fucking those monkeys. We've put a link in the description for a BBC article on the process of dubbing the water margin, which was more or less the same process used by the same crowd for Monkey. <laughs> A major part of the show's success is its music. 
Japanese band Go Daigo had previously released a theme for the Water Margin series and would also provide Monkey with its funky soundtrack. The band isn't credited on screen, just the band's keyboard player, Miki Yoshino, who wrote the show's music. Both seasons are strewn with hummable instrumentals and there are a few songs here and there, including the song Gandara over the first season credits. <laughs> or Holy and Bright that would close out the show's second season episodes. Holy, holy a soundtrack release has vocal versions of many of the tunes heard in the series as instrumentals. And of course, there is the series theme tune, which is known as Monkey Magic. Monkey Magic. Monkey Magic. Godaigo have recorded dozens of albums over the years, but their songs from Monkey would stay in their lives set for many years after the show faded from screens in Japan. The band's songs from Monkey have remained popular decades later, with other artists covering songs like Monkey Magic and Gandhara. That's just about the stupidest dance I've ever seen! Very disco! Get ready, I'll teach you how to dance! <laughs> Monkey was quite popular in Britain on its release, and remained popular enough to warrant the remaining undubbed episodes to be translated 25 years later. But from the perspective of this channel, Monkey has remained incredibly popular in Australia. It was first screened here in 1981, in the 6 to 7 pm time slot on the national broadcaster the ABC, a time slot that was most often used to screen repeats of The Goodies and Doctor Who. 1981 was a year when Doctor Who wasn't screened in Australia. Usually I would hate the shows that ran in this time slot, but Monkey was one of the few shows that I would watch again and again. And others felt similarly, with repeats of the show throughout the 80s and 90s and beyond. More recently, HD versions have popped up on Netflix, well locally at least, enchanting a new generation of fans. Sandy, hmm? vacuuming? No, empty space detecting. What's that indicate? Empty space. That is 40 plus years of kids repurposing their parents' broomsticks as magical wishing staves and smacking the shit out of each other. My finger, what is that thing? Now, I didn't borrow a broom, but I may have ruined a sofa by using the stuffing to make a cloud. And what's worse, I couldn't get it to take off, so I discarded it in the back garden and then a crow swooped in to take it and make a nest somewhere. So at the very least, my cloud did at least get airborne that one time. <coughs> Monkey was one of those shows that inspired lots of playground fights. You have to pity the poor kid who ended up playing Tripitaka. Actually, on reflection, I'd probably be more concerned with the kids playing Monkey getting an aneurysm from the kids playing Tripitaka. Not until a certain Noel has the good grace to acknowledge he's wrong. You'll get a smack in the face, you pompous fish fart. No violence, Pixie, it's, it's not so necessary. So. There have been many other tellings of the story of Journey to the West in animation, in movies, in shithouse video games, and in other television series. But for many, this series is the one they need. Before I go, I do have to say that the show's much hyped crossover with Sonic the Hedgehog was more than a little disappointing. That was unfunny. It wasn't funny at all. Monkey mostly holds up well, some language choices aside with some special effects that were more ambitious than achievable, and there's the fact that they never actually reach India. In this case, like working as a delivery driver, the journey is its own reward. I don't have the faintest idea what you are talking about. It's one of those shows I can watch every couple of years and enjoy for its pathos, its action, and its goofy fun. It's good. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, leave a comment below, or check out some of our other videos. Bye-bye. Good riddance! Monster! Oh!